my course will be about uh, uh, non-archimedic approach to uh, bridge and stability, but I don't want to explain what really my course will be about. It will be, will be too overwhelming. I just want to start slowly. So today plan will be uh, first, uh, plan for today will just have two parts. First kind of introduction to bridge and stability. Uh, which is purely algebraic game, and and then second part will be more analytic. I think it will be King's equation and something which I call hardener Simon flow, which will be both complex and non-Archimedean. So non-Archimedean story we appeal just at the very end. Ah. Yeah, so this definition of bridge and stability is a bit intimidating. If you, uh, yeah, if you don't know it, yeah, you just can sleep <laughs> for a while. Yeah, but uh, for those who know, uh, don't know it, it's, uh, the definition is intimidating, and uh, it's better to start with example. And the example is, the basic example to keep in mind is the following. You start with the following data. We have first arbitrary field, and we, we get some kind of a finite quiver. Quiver is just some graph you draw, something like, I don't know, three vertices and start to connect with some edges. Maybe a loop, yeah. You get this quiver. Then one have, uh, uh, when you have this quiver, can consider rep finite dimensional representations. So a will be a uh, category of finite dimensional representations of quiver over field K. So each vertex you pick some vector space and you get arbitrary linear maps. And this is obviously a billion category. We have kernels and co kernels. And the uh, next piece of data. The last piece of data will be have nothing to do with this. Think it just collection of complex numbers, z i in c, or i running through vertices of the quiver, and with the only condition that they lie in a upper half plane. In fact, uh, what it gives uh, gives us is gives a way kind of to put vertices in quiver and upper half plane. So we can uh, really try to, of course, uh, one can try to get some collection of numbers. Suppose they're all distinct and we just draw vertices now between points in the upper half plane. That's a way to kind of put some geometry on the quiver. Okay. And uh, then, then we have the following thing. Then uh, th what this collection of complex numbers will give us, it gives a map. Additive map called okay, big Z from a K group of my category to complex numbers. Namely, if we have any representation, it goes to sum over vertices Zi, small zi times dimension of i's component of my representation. It's and uh, clear if if E is non zero, then uh, Z is non zero, it has uh, also lines upper half plane, and one can speak about argument of this complex number. So define argument of E, which is just argument of this complex number, principal branch, which is something between zero and pi. You get some vector on upper half plane, that's the dire direction. Okay, so one can speak about argument and the main definition is that non-zero object is called theta semi-stable. The sigma is number here. If if uh, argument of E is equal to E and there is no sub-object uh, such that argument of P prime is bigger than C, theta. 
or for any subobjects, all arguments lie on the right. Oh, argument is not zero. Argument is uh, theta. Argument is theta. Is theta? Yeah. Sorry. It's, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I said something, but I mean, I mean this one. Yeah. Okay. So, so it's, it's a definition. So some objects are semi-stable, some are not semi-stable, and uh, kind of very basic theorem, not really theorem, is says the following: first, that for any object. In my category, there exists unique integer and and a filtration by by real numbers, decreasing filtration by real numbers, uh, which has only finitely many steps, and filtration can rise the following. So we get zero. So it will be First, we get some n numbers when you get non-trivial jump, and we get a, a zero, which will be part of when you get really big SMC1 of E, then contains not equal to Fn Fhn when you reach sigma one, and it will be the same as big than sigma two, and contains it contains the last part. The last part will be f greater sigma n h and e. Which is to e. Yeah, h n instead from Hardon or Simon. And the first constructor for the case of bundles and curves, such thing. And such that all associated graded. Is uh, sigma j semi stable? Yeah, so it's uh, uh, first uh, basic fact, uh, and second is that for any theta, just kind of it's a first I'll introduce some notation uh, for any angle theta denoted by a theta, it will be kind of full subcategory of A. Full subcategory means you have just collection of objects and have the same morphisms in the same bent category, consisting of, of zero and uh, theta semi-stable objects. And the claim that it claim A theta is abelian, so you get a new abelian category, and inclusion Sigma to A is exact. So it means that the if consider kernel and co-kernel will be the same as an ambient uh, story. And the third uh, property, if you consider home from some object E1 in eta sigma 1 to object E2 in sigma, in sigma 2 is 0 if sigma 1 is bigger than sigma 2. So there's no homes from left to right. Now that's essentially what everyone should know. And I'll just uh, uh, give you a sketch of the proof. Uh, Yeah, first, let's prove that such thing exists. Exists this uh, harness infiltration, existence of H infiltration, and essentially can read from the definition. But uh, 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 first, what will be number sig sigma one? Suppose e is, if e is zero, then n is equal to zero, nothing to talk. But now, if e is not zero, uh, then sigma one will be defined as the following. It's the maximal possible theta such that there exists a non-zero subobject such that central charge has argument theta, <coughs> object is non-zero. 
Yeah, because there are only finitely many possible dimension vectors as we get one mm, sigma one. And obviously all such subobjects will be sim sigma semi-stable because any, uh, it cannot have larger slope. All such sigma prime are sigma one semi-stable. And then uh, this kind of one easy argument is suppose we have two such subobjects. Now one have short exact sequence, we have the intersection, goes to abstract direct sum, and goes to actual sum as a subobject in, in, in E. Get short exact sequence. Uh, the left side and right side are subobject on E. So the argument of this guy is greater than sigma one. Argument of this guy is oh, less than sigma one, also less than sigma one. But here argument is exactly equal to sigma one. So it means that the have to be equal here and here, and you see that sum is also have a semi stable option. So we now we can uh, declare uh, this first term of filtration to be uh, whatever, uh, greater than sigma 1 hn of e to be kind of maximal such e prime with argument, with argument of e prime is equal to c sigma 1. And then you construct the first term, you make quotient, and the quotient you get some, uh, obviously some larger number, and, and then you uh, proceed step by step. Yeah, so you prove the existence. In similar way, you prove second statement, third statement, and then from this you can reduce its uniqueness. Can you show us what it means on the ZIs in the yes. picture? Yes, yes, yeah, uh, yeah, that's its kind of abstract story. Uh, now we should go to really concrete, more concrete examples. And uh, yeah, I will start with, first I'll start with idiotic example, but it's kind of, I want to st start. Yeah, it, it's when uh, Quiver has just one vertex. Uh, and uh, the Quiver itself could be uh, just a bunch of loops, and you get representation of free algebra. And when you get this central charge, you get just one number. And you get sigma 1, which will be the argument of z1. And this category is equal to this. So there's really nothing to talk about. Yeah, it's completely uh, uh, nothing goes on at all. Uh, yeah, it's kind of degenerate example. So this uh, really first not trivial example is when quiver is just map from uh, one to two. And in this case, there are just three indecomposable objects. Any, you have to map to two vector space, there are three ways how it behaves. It's either called E10, it's K maps to zero, E1, E01, zero goes to K, and E11, <coughs> and K goes to K by identity map. And, uh, Central charge of this guy will be z1, z2, and here z1 plus z2. Because it's dimension one here and dimension one here. Okay, mm. now um, there are kind of, again, uh, 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 case one. Uh, this number z1, z2 could be one on the left, on the right. If they are aligned, then we get again only one category, nothing to talk about. Now su suppose they are not aligned. Suppose this argument of z2 bigger than argument of z1. <coughs> so the quiver looks like this now on my plane. Uh, then E10 a and E01 are, are semi-stable and E11 is not because it fits in some short exact sequence. It has a subobject. It has a quotient object, and one can check that it uh, destabilizes this. Yeah, so there are, among these two categories, there are, uh, categories, there are two non trivial categories, two non trivial A sigmas, uh, corresponding to argument of Z1 and Z2. And both are as abstract abelian categories, categories just finite dimensional vector spaces. Both of them kind of finite dimensional K modules. And there is a second case, 
then uh, when z1 stays on the left of, of z2, and then all three objects will be uh, semi-stable, and you get, uh, you get uh, all three in the composal object are semi-stable, and, uh, and you get three instead of two, non-trivial is a sigma, and again all equivalent to k modules. Yeah, so uh, in this way you can see depending on stability condition you get just two or three categories. And two and three, in fact, uh, uh, it's a pretty nice story in theory of Donaldson Thomas invariance. Uh, is just some, uh, some quantum identity for quantum dialography, product of two quantum dialography is equal to product of three quantum dialography. It's, it's, it's really based exactly on this example. Okay. And, uh, but, uh, uh, yeah, th but this is too simple. One should go to a little bit more complicated story. Next example will be Kronecker quiver. Again, have two vertices, but now two arrows. And uh, it was a uh, Kronecker queer because Kronecker <coughs> solved this question of linear algebra, how to classify two, two vector spaces and two maps. And again, uh, there is a kind of stupid, non interesting case. In non interesting case, you get again only two uh, directions when you get uh, semi stable representations. And interesting case, and get opposite. And here I should draw the picture of what is going on. So we still on the upper half plane, we get z1, z2. I take some with this positive coefficient, so you we'll get all possible uh, charges of objects and uh, the, the places when I think exists, uh, there are kind of three uh, uh, three lines when difference of dimensions zero or plus minus one and uh, um, mm, uh, how one can write these representations yeah, usually people draw something like this. You get kind of vertex one and two. Uh, uh, kind of for dimension vector one zero, you draw zero and nothing. Or for dimension two one, you draw something like this. You get two one-dimensional space maps to one dimension, but it for arrow of one type or another way. Or you get vice versa. Or conversely, you can get uh, uh, things like this. And in the middle, when both dimensions coincide, you get, for example, multiply by uh, x0 by x1, one dimensional space, where x0, x1 is point in projective line. And you make some nilpotent expansion. You get a kind of an operator. So you get continuous parameter here. What will be cross, uh, what will be a point on projective line and this picture. Okay. That's it's called tame quivers to something which we can understand and there are wild quivers for which mm, there is really no uh, no answer complete answer uh, and just do for example three arrows and three arrows mm, uh, mm, what will happen mm, is that uh, the dimensions vectors which belongs to this the square of of semi-stable representations in interesting case when arguments are uh, in the right way, otherwise again you get to just two one-dimensional representations, are of the following form. It's either uh, 3 minus 1, 1, 0 to some positive numbers applied to vector 1, 0. which kind of correspond to left and right picture and all pairs of dimension vectors d1, d2, where d1, d2 are positive 
and the ratio is between uh, two quadratic rationalities. And these are uh, eigenvalues of these matrices. So the solution of equation lambda square minus two lambda plus one equal to zero. Uh, yeah, he, uh, yeah, here it's, uh, I can explain a little bit uh, why this matrix appears. There's something called reflection functors. For example, if you have just two, rep uh, two vector spaces and three maps, you can do uh, things like this. You can map E2 uh, have three maps to the co-kernel map, co-kernel of uh, uh, oh, just a second. Yeah, and, and like this. And and what uh, pictorially goes on uh, with a stable guys, you get certain cone. We get this all integer points in the cone, a rational cone, and then you get kind of two approaching discrete things. And uh, yeah, in fact, uh, the same pictures one can see when consider uh, uh, v um, uh, high. Um, they approach these irrational. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, the same things appears in uh, uh, something called hyperbolic Katz-Moody algebras. Then consider uh, uh, some Katzmund algebra such to some hyperbolic uh, quadratic form. Then one gets some kind of things inside convex cone and uh, and some discrete story going outside. And in fact, uh, uh, as, as far as I know, the question what are dimension vectors uh, can appear in this quivers uh, arbitrary stability, uh, this subtle charges Z, is not known. It should be some. Uh, definitely there's some fractal picture and some kind of uh, pretty nice sets. Yeah, here it's very simple, but uh, then it goes more. Yeah, and also uh, I write quivers, but one can put some relations, some comp composition of some arrows should be equal to composition of another arrow, some mod out, you can mod out pass algebra arbitrary ideal, so everything works as well. So it's kind of a bit stupid to ask questions just about representation que queers. There are many more categories and all mm. this. Okay. Yeah, so it's so this example which we should always have in mind. And uh, now I'll give kind of general definition. Uh, now, so it's uh, it's not a framework of abelian categories and framework of triangulated categories. So suppose have triangulated category. Uh, and again, you can try to think uh, as bounded drive category of some abelian category as uh, this representation of quiver, of pass algebra of quiver, or some algebra. So you get some triangulated category, the complexes, and uh, there are two ways to give definition. One can go to kind of more traditional way, going to uh, using uh, notion of uh, T structure. So the, uh, the first definition is the following. The bridging stability, the data is mapped from K0 of this triangulated category to complex numbers, additive map, and uh, Bounded T structure on C satisfying some constraint. Uh, 
And what is bounded T structure? Like for complexes of uh, derived category abelian category, you can consider complex constraints in certain degrees. Yeah, that's a way to speak of support on which degrees your complexes uh, mm, uh, concentrated. So this notion was, I think, first appeared in many years ago in this book by about perverse shifts by Offer Gaber and his collaborators. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but um, uh, there are many ways to give the definition what is bounded T structure. T structure is, is the following. And I can formulate in a way very similar to this uh, uh, thing which appears if before. So we have a full subcategory uh, which is in fact uh, on at the end of the day will be abelian and it's called heart of T-structure. Uh, and the properties are the following, that for any two objects in A, uh, there is no negative homes between them and formal notation is that if you shift object by one, then you get zero. So it's no x, uh, x minus one, like in a building category, it's only positive x. And, uh, and the second, uh, for any object, uh, there exists an infinite chain of maps. Uh, and uh, the, uh, the case which you note, it's, it's just some notation, standard notation, something called Tigma sigma zero e goes to yeah. In terms of complex, you get keep thinking truncate, truncate uh, up to uh, you keep homology up to a certain degree, and the things is eventually here you get map zero zero zero, and here it's eventually e e e with identity map. Minus one, yeah, sir, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so things kind of stabilize, and, it it's, uh, and this can be since analog of filtration, because in reality, Katie, one cannot speak about uh, uh, monomorphisms, it's arbitrary maps. And the property is that for any n, uh, the quotient map, which is denoted by con in triangulated categories, is uh, in A in degree plus n, which is in notation since it's shift by minus n. Yeah, so it seems something so 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 written in, de in the degree. N and then the thing is automatically uni unique and the category will be automatically abelian. Yeah. yeah, so this is the definition. And what is the constraint? And the constraint is uh, mm. the following one. Let's uh, now uh, restrict uh, z to k group of A, which is in fact is equal to k0 of c. And th the property is that for any non-zero non object in A, the z of E uh, will lie in uh, slightly more. It will be lie, for example, there are two ways to say it. It will be lie in upper half plane plus positive numbers. So it will be non-zero number, and um, then we can again speak about argument. Now we belong from zero to pi, and then the, uh, when you look on uh, proof this of this theorem, this is some induction procedure. This procedure should should be terminate. H N filtration exists, and then of course unique. Yeah, so it's kind of a mixture of two things. You make this destruction, then on a building category, you get this harness filtration. Yeah, yeah this definition looks like a mixture of two uh, things, but in fact, they are uh, the same. This uh, equivalent definition. Uh, uh, the data will be 
central charge plus collection of subcategories C, let's call it C sigma full subcategories for all sigma in R and with the property and the uh, but axiomatics is a little bit longer but uh, uh, mm, the following so for any object in C sigma which is non-zero the, cent uh, the central charge of this class of this object has not its number of argument exactly uh, cities particles not zero and then uh, if you add n it's the same you shift by n mm, for any integer uh, and if sigma 1 bigger than sigma 2 and e1 in 1, 2 belongs to the sigma, sigma 1, 2, then there's no Holmes. And, and then for any object, there exists n and filtration. H n filtration uh, means it just get the sequence of morphisms. Uh, mm, uh, so it's essentially like a tau filtration, but it will be kind of tau uh, maybe minus sigma 1 e minus sigma 2 and so on uh, and such at corresponding uh, cones of morphisms R belongs to this category C sigma i yeah yeah so it's kind of a nice way to combine uh, these two notions and the equivalence uh, goes as follows. Uh, uh, so definitions, for example, if you start with definition number one, how to go to definition number two? You would declare this sigma, sigma plus n is using one of the sections is sigma sigma shifted n for any sigma zero pi. Okay. Yeah, obtained by shift. And conversely, if you get definition number two, uh, then you define A will be sigma and I write 0 pi, it means that object, when you make filtration, you get only things in, in this argument. Ex uh, all HN filtration in has arguments in, in this interval. And yeah, so it's, uh, and why this second definition is better? Because what one can uh, see immediately is that uh, you have, if you have one stability, bridging stability, then you can make another by just shifting this number c theta and rotating z. Yeah, so this action of R, which is universal cover of S of 2R, in fact, uh, acts on stabilities. You just uh, ta take sigma c nu, you'll be, if you get some <coughs> real number, you just declare it to be C sigma minus sigma zero, old, and central charge nu will be exponent of I sigma zero, sigma old. Yeah, I just rotate the whole things. And in fact, this SO2 can be extended to action of universal cover of group of jl 2 r but this plus, this seeming positive uh, mm, de mm, determinant and the reason that in all these games what we really need for this complex numbers it should be oriented plane we need one race on the left or the right and one can make kind of sh by sheer transformation make on the stabilities 
and uh, and and hen hence one and also one get a lot of abelian categories. First, there's a category C, C sigma, but also you can see this, this category from sigma to sigma plus pi, or I can go. Uh, semi-inter, semi-close interval in opposite direction, and all three, all three types of categories, all are abelian. Yeah, so one get huge kind of abelian categories depending on continuous parameter. Mm. I just want maybe to show some. Nice example. Yeah, yeah. What we have this Kronecker quiver, and and we can see the complexes, finite complexes of representations of this Kronecker quiver. It's actually the same from from great point of view as coherent shifts on on P one. Uh, for example, uh, this uh, this guy can go to shift shift whatever O, and this guy can go to uh, O1, but shift it in, in to degree minus 1. Then you can check this is gives equivalence. Uh, and mm, for this category of representation of P1, one can try to think geometrically. So the central charge. Let's take a billion category will be coherent shifts on P1. It's the drive category of a billion category. And for coherent shifts, uh, what things one can measure? Uh, the central charge of E will be uh, square root minus 1 times rank of E plus, yeah, eventually this category will be something like 0 pi, I think. Uh, plus a uh, minus degree of E. And mm, about coherent shifts on P1, we know everything. Uh, we get O, kind of powers of line bundles. This a a a every line bundle is by Gorton's series sum of line bundles. They sit in kind of parallel line to think. But here we consider O of x, where x is a point. Or O divided by maximal ideal of x. Or can go off square of maximal ideal. So you get uh, such in the composable objects. And they will be all semi stable. So what you get, you get one infinite strip, one half strip. And here is the same thing. And if you rotate shift by, shift by one, make it symmetric, and rotate by 90 degrees, you get exactly this picture. Yeah, yeah. So it's essentially the same uh, stability condition, but just rotate it one, and you go from geometric language to algebraic language. Uh, that's uh, uh, one very nice example. And one can go to uh, a bit more complicated story. One can see the dB of coherent shifts on elliptic curve. Again, take rank and degree. And then by a TS theorem, one get all, uh, all points, integer points on a, on a uh, lattice. Uh, and for, and for each direction, uh, rational direction, you get subcategory. Each C sigma is either 0 or equivalent to something very nice, coherent shifts with zero dimensional support on the LTP curve, just a bunch of points and the importance of them. And here that's uh, also kind of very nice, you have action of SL2Z, and there is SL2Z acting on derived category of elliptic curve, and everything is kind of uh, um, nice and clean. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so that's uh, kind of first glimpses of what our stabilities look like. So we kind of can construct some case of for coherent shifts on curves. And then uh, people uh, 
had um, succeeded to do things in dimension two and three, but in dimension four, it's it's complete uh, it's complete block. Uh, this by elementary means it's impossible to uh, mm, do anything. Uh, Yeah, so the question is, why at all we are talking about all such uh, stuff? Yeah, uh, yeah, first it's, of course, it's very uh, clean uh, definition. Uh, uh, there are various uh, uh, reasons. Mm. Yeah. First, it's kind of by curiosity. Get many new exotic abelian categories which are not modules over some algebra so completely different guys. Even for elliptic curve, if you take irrational slope, you get half plane, you get some kind of crazy categories and this interesting question how, what will be algebra behind it and so on. Uh, but also you get a uh, model space of stability structures Uh, with some certain technical conditions, which I don't talk right now, it's by Bridgen theorem, it's a complex manifold. Which is locally, locally isomorphic to a subspace in home from K0 to C. And one can make it sexually finite dimensional. So it will be some finite dimensional complex manifold, but but a pretty stupid one, I have to say, just the union of kind of convex cone and CN. And, and end out with action of GL plus 2R, which is uh, close to the heart of people in dynamical systems. Uh, yeah, but mm, these are still not real arguments. Uh, the, um, if category is three-dimensional Calabio category, so you have some duality, home of EF dual will be finite dimensional, it will be home of F E shifted by three. Then there is the story of Donaldson Thomas invariance, which is a very complicated thing, which gives certain deformation of this manifold, uh, get some kind of non-linear modification of this guy, and, this, uh, and the resulting manifold should be really great complex manifold, uh, kind of maybe some, some uh, very non-algebraic complex manifold, but with some analytic continuation property which you expect from string theory and gravity, M, M theory and so on. So it's kind of really good counting question. And the main thing is there should be a lot of Brisian stabilities. It's coming from, again, theory, n equal to super conformal field theory, predicts that if X is, let's say, co mm, compact Calabio variety of any dimension, then the modulus space of dual Calabio varieties should give non-trivial stabilities on this. Yeah, so it's really challenged algebraic geometry to construct a way to uh, 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 some things and. Uh, or maybe this one last thing, it's uh, uh, the not only modular space of stability structure is interesting. If you fix the stability structure, then in reasonable situation, then consider this category A, C, sigma, and fix class in K theory, and consider, this is, uh, consider only semi-simple objects, in this category, they form some nice moduli space. And this moduli space 
should be projective, quasi-projective variety. So you kind of classify object to some uh, groups of, uh, organize classification of object in your category in reasonable groups and this will be quasi-projective varieties. Yeah, so it was a short introduction to stability and maybe I'll have uh, f five minutes break and continue to really inter interesting <laughs> stuff I have. Yeah. Okay. So now the second part, it will be some less abstract story. Yeah, so it will be this is an equation which were introduced by um, Alistair King, who was a student of Donaldson at the time. Uh, so I return to situation of two, two quivers. Now, now suppose my field is complex numbers and Q is a quiver. And we get these numbers Zi in upper half plane to play this stability game. Uh, now mm, uh, let's fix some dimension vector, which is just collection of uh, zero numbers for all i in vertices, and assume that it's non-zero. Uh, so uh, some representations are stable, semi-stable, some are not semi-stable. And uh, how to uh, deal with this? Uh, mm. So sigma will be argument of this number. And we define mu i is imaginary part of the i times exponent of minus square root of minus i uh, sigma. Um, see, and then we have the following property sum over uh, mu i di is equal to zero. Mu i are real numbers. And what is geometric meaning? We get just a bunch of vectors. We get z, this z i, and mu i is is a projection to perpendicular line uh, to to vector z. Just put put q ninety degrees and make projections. Okay, mm, so get we replace by real numbers, and. Uh, uh, how one, one can how one can think about representation of quivers up to isomorphism of given dimension vector? So I mean, first one, if one uh, have a representation, one can choose a basis in each vector space, and then the representation quiver will be just a bunch of matrices, and denote by v, it will be direct sum over all arrows of my quiver of uh, c to power d i d j. And on this vector space, there's a group acting which is product of group G L D I C. And how it acts, uh, mm, so if it contains collection of G I, and here contains T I J, then T I J goes to something like G, G J T I J T I G I inverse. Uh, this will be action on, on the group. So you change basis and how see how representation looks in your basis. And isomorphism class of representations is, is a quotient space. And then um, this Mumford theory of stability, which I'll talk more seriously next time, says that how to get kind of good part of this quotient. And it was slightly generalized by uh, King and Here's his theorem, which is, says the following. Uh, uh, point V in this vector space uh, corresponds to, to semi-stable uh, 
representations if and only if uh, one can formulate a question about sub submodule, uh, blah, 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 but one can translate geometrically to the actual group on vector space that uh, uh, for any one parameter subgroup, GMC, kind of C star, embedded to G, uh, suppose uh, such that limit uh, lambda goes to zero, lambda is a complex numbers, uh, inclusion denote by no subgroup by phi, um, G of phi of lambda of V exists. So it doesn't, uh, so you get some one parameter pressure group, which goes, V goes to some, uh, some uh, point inside vector space. Then for such one parameter subgroup, uh, uh, certain things should be uh, positive. Um, lim of chi mu of g uh, of phi of lambda is uh, positive, could be plus infinity. We are, what is chi mu? Uh, in algebraic geometry, people like uh, uh, write uh, um, algebraic characters, but I write just a, a continuous homomorphism group, which collection of GI goes to sum over I log absolute value of determinant of GI. Uh, so you get um, kind of formal re real combination of co co of characters of my group. Yeah, so it's uh, one condition, and then it's equivalent to uh, uh, something else. Consider function on a group. By capital phi on group, namely uh, phi of g is equal to. Depending on my vector, uh, it will be square of lengths of g of v. It's coordinate space, so we'll take usual sum of squares, uh, plus the same thing which I wrote before, sum of mu i not dead g i. Yeah, it's, it's, it's almost clear that things are equivalent because. Uh, mm. Uh, uh, the existence of the limit, it says that it's, uh, ah, so sorry, what I want to say, and the property is that this function is bounded below. On the group. Now, now how it could be non-bounded? This, this term is very, very positive, so if you, if you go to change your matrix go to kind of infinity in, in the group, this thing should, should stay kind of bound in a vector space, but then thi this thing should be positive, otherwise it can go to minus infinity. Yeah, so it's a mm. equivalent statement. Uh, yeah, so, so this is uh, translation to uh, Mumford theory, what is stability, uh, and uh, moreover, Phi phi achieves uh, global minimum. It could be bounded below, but never achieves the minimum. So, but it achieves global minimum if and only if is if my represent corresponding representation is what's called polystable guy, and uh, which in terms of representation means it's it's. it's is a uh, uh, direct sum of simple objects in, in category sigma. Semi-simple objects inside the category. It's not semi-simple in the whole category, but inside uh, the abelian subcategory, it's semi-simple. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so that's uh, uh, mm, uh, general theorem, but now one can write Constrain. What does it mean that you have a, uh, this global minimum at some point? You write equations that derivative is, or even kind of, kind of critical point. It's, or, or 
equivalent critical point. One can prove that any critical point is automatically global minimum. Uh, the equation for the critical point uh, means the following. Uh, yeah, one should kind of unwind the definition. What is, uh, for example, what is uh, square of norm in this V? Square of norm in this V? It's sum of traces of all arrows of matrices multiplied by Hermitian conjugate. You take sum of squares of matrix elements is the same as trace of this thing. And this <coughs> is determinant. And um, uh, when you get a point, then you get a representation, you get kind of standard U uh, Hermitian matrix on each vector space. One can uh, uh, say the following. It's the same as representation of quiver. Uh, uh, of um, plus Hermitian norms on each uh, EI and plus orthogonal basis to identify these coordinate spaces. And the equation are the following sum over all arrows, you make this commutant, you get sum over I. It's arrows, and here it's some all, all vertices of mu i rejection of e i, and both on left hand uh, left hand side it's self adjoint operators in total space of the representation of the quiver. So you get this uh, neat equation for the existence of minimal point and. And this is something really very uh, deep uh, because, yeah, for example, let's consider case when all mu i equal to zero. In terms of representation curves, it's, it's corresponding to things that all the i are parallel. So all my numbers is on one one ray, and when projector gets zero, mm. and then we just think about semi-simple representation of curves. Are exactly those which admits admitting norms such that some of commutants is equal to zero. And it's uh, a very nice equation called Hermitian Young Mills uh, equation in matrix models. Uh, uh, and uh, <coughs> and one can say the following. So there are two algebras. I, which will be pass algebra of your quiver. And just basis are all fine pass. Uh, and representation of quiver is the same as representation of pass algebra, which has, uh, once you say, generators pi, uh, <coughs> projector i for all vertices, arrows, t alpha for all arrow, and the relations, something, some of these orthogonal projectors. Some of projectors equal to 1. And T alpha, where alpha goes from to J is equal to J T alpha. I. You get this algebra, pass algebra, which is kind of description of generative relations. And then you get another algebra B, which contains A, and it will be star algebra. And you, you add extra relations that projectors are self adjoint and and this Hermitian-Yangel's equation. And then we see that semi-simple representation of A, finite dimensional representation of A, and the same as the star representations of B, up to isomorphism.
Yeah, when we do this identification, we, we have some kind of freedom. We can make different algebras B, different star algebras B containing A. You just start to rescale T alpha, for example. You can write, instead of this equation, write this equation, so kind of secretly you rescale, uh, rescale T alpha, you see alpha arbitrary real numbers. So you get different star algebras with the same representation theory, because the representation theory will be the same as simple representation of original algebra, it doesn't depend on the chances. So you get many, many Bs, and the natural question, or, or yeah, I don't do any completion, so it, because when I do representations, it goes to some star completion, and one can ask whether the star completions are canonically identified. It's actually an old question, uh, question I have, some conjectures that star completions are identified, and if you want to make it kind of uh, pre precise question without looking what as a completion, uh, one can do, for example, as the following question. Consider say, um, a class of functionals on B, which are uh, T of A, A star is greater than zero, T of A, B is equal to T of B, A, and T of one is equal to one. Consider just uh, traces called states in uh, quantum mechanics on this algebra. This thing maps to homomorphism of vector spaces from A modular commutant to C. It's not, not a, small a is not necessarily an element of, of small, of capital A, it could be uh, anything. Yeah, and you get the image and the, um, for example, the, uh, the conjecture, the, the image doesn't depend on the choice of whatever, uh, like, for example, this constant. Choice of B. And, uh, yeah, that's the first uh, case when mu i equal to zero. The same one can do add mu i to the games. And you should, for some mu i, you should have something non zero. Some, sometimes you have traces, sometimes do not traces. And the uh, uh, kind of the conjecture. If my algebra shows the path algebra of this wild quiver, uh, for which set of pairs mu1, mu2, such, such a uh, trace exist, uh, or maybe we can see the ratio of mu1 cross mu2 when trace exists, should be uh, direction of race the following picture. If you remember, I, I get this mm, kind of uh, sector where all rational directions were really present as finite dimensional representations and some kind of discrete series uh, approaching it um, of rigid representations. And, uh, but for finite dimensional representation, I have only rational directions here because otherwise there's no finite dimensional uh, ratio of dimensions, uh, ratio of two integer numbers. But for this thing, it uh, it's can go to factors, and what I expect, I get, I get exactly all real rays in, in this uh, domain. So you get certain interesting question in star algebra for this business. Okay, uh, now this King's equation. One can formulate as the following way. Consider operator on uh, on on this space given by sum of commutants plus sum of mu i conjecture i. It's not as ah z i. Now I put instead of mu i put z i. These numbers. Uh, uh, now it's not self-adjoint operators because 
uh, numbers are complex. But this operator is normal operator. It's commute with, uh, uh, with Hermitian conjugate. So you can write uniquely as product of argument and uh, uh, for some self adjoint argument, argument and B. You can write it like this way. And uh, this uh, King's equation are equivalent to the fact that this is argument of P, which is self adjoint operator, is equal to sigma times identity of direct sum of Ti. Now, that's, uh, um, that's a condition. And now I'll go to the main definition. What is Hardnessian flow? It acts on what? It's a flow action of kind of uh, in positive direction. It acts on the space of uh, metrization of E, which is product of I metrization of EI. A metrization of EI, it's a space of Hermitian matrix in EI, which is kind of so the product of GL DIC divided by unitary group. So I guess uh, now I kind of change uh, gear. I, I don't consider basis, I consider abstract fixed representation, now change Hermitian matrix on it. And on this thing, I consider the following flow. So the uh, element here will be collection of uh, Hermitian matrix on each piece, and the flow will be the following. Uh, I take H inverse H dot, you get some self adjoint operator is equal to minus argument of this P. Uh, so here depends on h bar secretly hidden in the notion of Hermitian conjugate. So it's minus argument of sum of commutant, and and here depends on Hermitian conjugate plus sum of i. Now, so I get a certain flaw. And uh, <coughs> the claim that this flow will kind of analytically produce me hardware assumed filtration. I, in original uh, description, how we do, we take, uh, start to search for all possible sub representations and so on. And here it will be completely different, some kind of flow which by kind of Lapunov uh, exponents will produce you hardware assumed filtration. Uh, sir? Lepunov. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll explain what is going on. Um, mm. uh, so consider uh, uh, so, uh, if there's a claim this is a solution exists for all times, and consider solution t, which goes to plus infinity. And now consider e ellipsoids. Collection of vectors, uh, you know, u in uh, sum of ei. <coughs> Get some ellipsoid depending on parameter t. It will be kind of like uh, maybe longer and longer in one direction and sh shorter in uh, this direction. And that automatically gives you a flag. Uh, so you get things uh, direction when it ellipsoid is, it will be long, so it will be subspaces and so on. And the theorem, which we have with uh, uh, many authors, uh, Fabian Haydn, Ludmil Katsarkov, Pandit and me, that uh, it's not uh, written in uh, archive paper, but it's still true theorem, that um, behavior of, of this metric for t goes to infinity 
uh, gives Harnas infiltration the following way. Namely, let's consider a set of vectors u such that logarithm of norm of u with respect to h of t is equal to minus sigma sigma jt plus uh, small o of t as t goes to infinity. And the claim it's a uh, term vectors belonging exactly to one ter uh, specific term of Harnoy signal filtration. So this will be filtration It will be uh, lying exactly in sigma j subspace of filtration. Yeah, that's uh, the, the theorem. And let me explain uh, briefly what the proof. If the if we start with um, already a kind of harmonic metric uh, solution of this equation, then the then the flow will be just rescaling with a constant speed. So we get automatically this uh, story. Uh, now there are some kind of tools. Uh, tools, we have monotonicity. If, if, uh, if h1 of 0 is less than h2 of 0, then for any positive time, you get. Uh, so upper bounds, uh, bounds preserved. And also if you multiply by constant, then it will be multiplied by constant for all times. It's completely obvious properties. But they uh, show that up to O of 1, the behavior doesn't depend on the initial condition, because it can sandwich one metric between another shifted multiplied by one constant and another constant. Yeah, so you get kind of uniform behavior depending on the initial condition. And then uh, um, what is going on is you start to analyze what's going for not polystable representation, but semi-stable. And it's a pretty uh, complicated story uh, because uh, it's small o of t, but in fact it will be, in real life, it will be a linear combination of log log t plus something log 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 t, iterated logarithm of t, so it's, it, uh, ah, maybe logarithm of t plus log log t and so on. So it's uh, very, very slow deviations could be. And then at the end we get O1, for which we don't know, but it's sufficient for all purposes. Uh, by some L1 estimates, one can prove that it's kind of ansatz, if you know, solution of O1 in error terms of its integral for the time, then we get good estimate. And then if one uh, also can, uh, if one have Harnas infiltrations, it will be, one again, one can combine the previous knowledge and do it. Yeah, yeah so it's pretty uh, sophisticated proof. And I just want to say that there are mm, this iterated logarithms is really pain in the, in, in the neck because mm. this is a very closely related question from which we don't have answer. Essentially the same question, but it's slightly more general. Consider function of n variables, which equal to exponent minus x1 plus exponent minus x1 minus x2 plus exponent minus x1 minus xn. It's function from Rn to positive numbers. Now consider gradient flow. x dot is equal to minus gradient of f. Conjecture, which I, we don't know how to prove, that x i of t is log 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 i times of t plus o of 1, big o of 1. It's, yeah, I don't know how to prove it. Yeah, for, I can prove for n equal 2 already. At, already because it's some explicit formula and so on. And Lyapunov functions, there's a method to prove such inequalities are so horrible already in this case, it's, it's no way to generalize it, yeah. Okay, yeah, so that's uh, harnoy Simon flow. And now I briefly finish what is non-archimedian analog of it. Oh, sorry. No, I have, have a lot of time, sorry.
Uh, we'll have non-Archimedean version, and this non-Archimedean version will be uh, much simpler. No iterated logs. Uh, also, in principle, one can try to add them by hand, but not here. Mm. So now we should uh, uh, consider non Archimedean fields. Yeah, so I'll start a little lesson of non-Archimedean geometry now. So K will be a non-Archimedean field, complete non-Archimedean field. Uh, what's the definition? So you get field and you get norm map from K to real numbers. So that norm of AB is equal to norm A plus B. Equal to one. Now a plus b is, is less than maximum, and k is complete with respect to metric given by distance. Is no difference. Now, um, oh, so this. Uh, if you get such things, you can first make kind of OK will be set of elements from less than one. It's it's a ring and contains ideal. In fact, it will be maximal ideal uh, set of A less than, less than one, and the quotient. It's a field. It's called residue field. Okay. Mm. And so get a uh, residue field and also get a uh, valuation map from K star uh, goes to R and the A goes to minus log of norm A. Uh, the image is a subgroup. And assume that volition is non-trivial. Image is not equal to zero. So there is some kind of really stupid situation when norm of everything non-zero is equal to one and norm zero is zero. I want to exclude this stupid case. Uh, uh, and uh, so the image is certain non-trivial group. And there are kind of uh, two extreme cases. It could be discrete volition and the image is constant times integers, or could be completely continuous, say, relation where image is all real numbers. It could be something in between, like rational numbers. <coughs> okay. So what are examples? Yeah. Originally introduced in for periodic numbers. consider rational numbers and make a completion uh, or you can take Laurent series in one variable and valuation 
instead of norm, it's the same story of sum of C and Pn and greater than zero and C and zero. It's kind of leading uh, degree of leading coefficients. Or uh, is this a discrete relation? Uh, and there are continuous relation. You take uh, form of power series, we exponent are real numbers. Uh, so you take sum of a C lambda i t to lambda i, where C lam lambda i belongs to the residue field. A lambda i are real numbers, and as are finitely many, or the limit is equal to plus infinity. Right? Or infinite thing. And uh, by the way, the same thing one can do with periodic numbers. One can consider uh, sum over uh, C lambda i P to lambda i. We just complete uh, formal notation where C lambda i are digits. Uh, so right, periodic numbers are written as digits i. Uh, placed in integer places, but now they're placed in real places. It still can multiply and add such things and get complete field. <coughs> yeah, so get, uh, uh, we have this non Archimedean fields, and uh, if you have vector space, One can speak about norms or metrizations of E. It's a uh, uh, set of all possible maps from V to positive numbers, satisfying the axioms which you uh, kind of clear that uh, uh, V1 plus V2, V1 v is bigger than zero if e is non zero and v1 plus v2 is less than maximum and if you multiply by constant in, in your field and then you get a product yeah okay Now one can also do infinite dimensional spaces and functional analysis it's uh, quite tricky <coughs> but uh, we'll do just finite dimensional uh, I think and mm. uh, like in usual complex vector space one can uh, go make kind of normal form uh, one can go to diagonal uh, one can uh, uh, write things explicitly and uh, there's a claim that uh, for any uh, flag, complete flag in V, just in uh, one dimensional space, you can two dimensions, so on, there exists a basis compatible with in the flag. Uh, so that uh, basis means that you identify this coordinate space, such that norm of vector, of any vector, is equal to maximum of certain constants lambda i, the lambda i are positive real numbers. And here's normal in my field. <coughs> yeah, so it's given by kind of standard form. Uh, and if my relation is uh, uh, um, continuous, uh, 
then one can uh, compensate this lambda i by norms of some elements of the field. You just get, you can make it a uh, simpler form, maximum of all x, xi. And then you see that all, mm, in the continuous case, all metrizations are isomorphic to each other. And the space of metrizations is, is if dimension of V is some number n, is just J L N K divided by analog of unitary group, which are transformations preserving the standard norm in coordinate space. Yeah, so it's completely parallel to usual um, complex geometry. And in not continuous space, the story is a little bit more complicated. Maybe I just say a word. In the case of discrete volition, one can analyze what is the norm. Uh, and it's the following. It's the same as the choice of, uh, you, consider, can, uh, you can make a unit ball of your uh, thing, you consider uh, unit ball and get uh, what's called lattice in this uh, uh, series. So it's, it's a free module over the ring of integers, like periodic numbers. Some module in V, which is generates uh, V as OK. So it's something isomorphic to OK to power N, where N is dimension of V. And, and I get a submodule, kind of, let's call it V0, and then you make divide by maximal ideal. You get vector space over residue field called its kind of uh, we reduced. It's a vector space over the residue field, and in this vector space, you introduce a filtration by numbers. by numbers from 0 to 1, not including 1. By, uh, and this is something called, which people in other uh, areas called parabolic structure. Yeah, like you have bundle on a curve, and at some point you fix uh, filtration by real numbers between 0 and 1. It's finitely many steps. Yeah, so this thing's uh, uh, different. Yeah, yeah. So that's uh, uh, the picture. What will be non-commutative analogs of norms? And now I want to define want to define analog of Cardinal Simon flow in, in, in my story. Uh, one can do it in general, but mm, uh, I will assume that I have continuous uh, uh, norm. So not discrete continu uh, continuous relation, whatever. Uh, the, um, uh, it's kind of opposite to what people in algebraic geometry usually like discrete relation, and for me it's, it's much simpler to do in, in this uh, continuous. Uh, one can translate from one language to another. So the, the basic example I want to see is this, this ring, which is kind of called Novikov ring. by some kind of floor theory equations. Uh, uh, so what will be the kind of the key ingredient for defining harness in the flow? And 
Yeah, just uh, again, will be first question is kind of general linear algebra. Suppose we given metrization and point <coughs> of metrization, maybe I'll denote something like new. It, no, it will not Hermitian form, it will be kind of like norm, I don't know. Given new metrization of V. Uh, I can, uh, yeah, uh, I already had this. reduction to special fiber in uh, language of algebraic geometry, uh, which uh, will be set of vectors in V, you know, V nu less than one, divided by the same thing as norm strictly less than one. And in case of continuous evaluation, uh, uh, it will be behave uh, very well. It will be again always n-dimensional vector space of the residue field, because any continuous relation can move to the standard form when you get a maximum of xi without lambdas. You get this thing, and then you get just coordinate space under the quotient. It's also it's vector space of residue field of the same dimension. Now imagine the following. I have this guy with the residue field. Suppose I get certain flag. Maybe not complete flag. Uh, F0 sitting in F1. Certain length, certain m is equal to V reduced. Define dimensional space. And suppose I get a bunch of functions, which are germs of functions, of continuous functions, lambda 1 of t, lambda 2 of t, so lambda m of t, where t is uh, a real number very close to 1, so it will be defined only for as a germ, it's equal to zero for positive t. So I have a, a, a pass. Then I get canonically a pass in a germ of pass in metrizations of V. Uh, there's no choices should be made here. How this goes, I, uh, the construction is the following. Choose any basis of we reduced compatible with the flag. So it means that uh, subspace of flag will be space drained by first several vectors in the ordered basis. Ordered basis. And lift it to basis of V. So we get some coordinates, and now <coughs> what we do, we just uh, oh, I forgot one important property. This function should be one bigger than another. So it's, yeah. uh, and then define. depending on metrization nu of t, which you want to define. This kind of t goes to nu, nu of t. In the following way, it's the maximum over all indices i. Uh, Xi times to 
E to lambda appropriate some index depending on I of, of T. Uh, well, uh, this counts to which terms of the flag I, uh, I learned. Yeah, so I just consider diagonal, uh, naive diagonal thinking, and the claim doesn't depend on the choice of the basis for small t. And a lift. Uh, what you do, just look what you get coordinate change, and then, and then very easy to see that it doesn't at terms of kind of high degrees, and they for small t do not do not uh, mm. Mm. interact, uh, do not change this norm. Yeah, yeah. So so that's uh, mm, something pretty funny. One can say it in the following way: that kind of tangent cone, whatever it means, to metrization of v at some nu. is a set of all R filtrations on uh, we reduced. Yeah, so it's, uh, 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 so the story is that it's, uh, the space of metrizations is something very, very non-smooth, but still it has a uh, it's uh, like in simplest example looks like a tree and so on, uh, and uh, so <coughs> the tangent space is not a vector space, but it's still something which you can just a cone can multiply by positive real numbers, and this set set of R filtrations, it's something which you can multiply by positive real numbers. You can re uh, multiply terms of filtration by by any constant bigger than zero, and it's collapsed to zero when all terms of filtration has zero. And the claim that this path of the tangent space, it's kind of canonically isomorphic to neighborhood. So you get kind of exponential map by this construction. Uh, yeah. Okay. So that's pr preparations. Now I go to actual construction. Uh, now uh, fix a quiver and E will be representations of quiver over my non Archimedean field and Ah, actually, maybe I have to do the following. Uh, what will be my abelian category A? It will be uh, consist of all representations of quiver over K such that. Uh, there exists a model over presentation of a ring of integers. And, and, th and this uh, can be reformulated in the following way. There exists a collection of norms Such that for any arrow, uh, uh, corresponding operator from EI to EJ is contracting. So it's T A of U less than L of U. So the operator norm is less than one, less than one, and then the unit balls will form a model of a ring of integers. It's in this continuous relation, unit balls is the same as models. Okay, so that's the definition, and for representation, so we get something non-empty 
for E in A, define metrization of E. This will be collection of all, all such norms. Nu i satisfying this norm of t, t alpha. One. It's uh, not arbitrary norms, so it's you get some things, but main thing it's not empty. Uh, it's for i metrizations of e i. Of course we get this constraint. Mm. Yeah, so uh, so this category is not all representation of QRS or RSD field. Uh, for example, if you have a loop, then all eigenvalues should have norm less than one. So I uh, put some con constraint like quasi whatever unipotent in complex case. And mm, mm, next uh, next lecture I'll explain how to go beyond this constraint. This is will be kind of really the easiest situation. So I get this. Uh, a billion categories get a space of metrizations. And now I want to define a flaw here. Sorry? It's not 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 expanding yet, contracting in not string sense. Yeah, it's not strict inequality. Mm. <coughs> yeah. Oh, by the way, uh, this. Uh, mm. If I get E E and in an object of A and a normal city metrization of E, then I get uh, because it has a model I can uh, get representation pure of the residue field, uh, which I, uh, for vector space I denote something like V reduced, but now I introduce kind of notation, which will be clear next time. Uh, J upper star nu of E. To the representation of quiver of the residue field, uh, which we take again vectors of length less than one and divided by strictly less than one. And uh, just to say some notation, uh, this kind of tradition in algebraic geometry, we're going to get closed embedding like point in a formal disk denoted by J. It's kind of pull back uh, to, to point, yeah, kind of, kind of point to formal disk. Yeah, that's yeah, ju it's just notation, just convenient to have this thing. Um, so I get representation of curious residue field. And the formula for the flow is for non-Archimedean H and flow is the following. Okay, like new dot or kind of like maybe <coughs> and one can try to think in terms of Hermish matrix in universal dot. It's a tangent vector. Will be should be given by some filtration. And what is the filtration? It's minus harder number symbol take increasing by decreasing by minus numbers harder symbol filtration on uh, on this guy. Uh, it gets a representation of residue field. It has some canonical filtration by some angles. I take minus uh, make uh, instead of. Uh, mm, uh, labeled by minus numbers, and then we get uh, tangent vector, and it will be speed. Yeah. So now it's a question of analysis. So the space is horrible. Yeah. What does it mean? What is this ODE theory? How, what does it mean? We can solve equation with initial condition and the speed. Yeah. Mm. In this case, uh, yeah. In, in this case, actually, it's, it's doable. We have more complicated situation when we ran to some like collaborators with some horrible problems, maybe in model theory, got like infinitely many things, get, happens infinitely often, and yeah, it looks kind of a nightmare. But here, uh, um, uh, uh, 
one can describe solution the following way. If you fix a point, mu, mu zero. Uh, I have a filtration. Get fi filtration. Uh, uh, of this guy. Sorry for notations. I, I, I get this uh, filtration, and now I start to rescale them. So I consider uh, uh, I, I get a pass germ of pass uh, t greater than zero and much much less than one goes to uh, filtration by uh, labeled by minus t sigma j, which is a time. I get uh, I, uh, labeled terms of filtration by this minus t sigma uh, 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 theta, theta j, with theta j come from this Harnar Simon story. And I get kind of str st straight pass. This my functions will be just constant linear functions, one greater than another. It leaves in this tangent cone. Right? It's least in tangent cone, but it's actually a pass in the tangent cone. Straight pass, all the lambda i will be minus uh, sigma i t, uh, minus sigma 2 t, uh, so on. Yeah. These numbers were decreasing, but minus will be uh, in, uh, increasing. Yeah, so we get a, a straight pass, and then we get a straight pass of uh, uh, by uh, this uh, universal construction gives it ger canonical germ. Of a pass in in space of metrizations. Yeah, so it looks like we can start to move, but uh, uh, this procedure, if you get any set, say, and then for each point you get a germ of a pass, it's 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 it could be something something could go wrong here, like imagine that for each point you produce a certain pass. Then consider nearby point, but it should produce maybe some different pass. Yeah, so this will be not compatible. And uh, it's easy to check that I think it's kind of self-compatible. So it means that if you start, mm, uh, so, so consider germ of a pass, penetrate, and now start apply procedure to some point on this pass, you get the same pass with shifted time. Small things, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, and that's good. That it means that we really uh, 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 have uh, uh, th this germs gives me really solutions of OD, not uh, some curves which start with the uh, right first speed. Okay, now I get uh, 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 good notion of ODE. I get a speed, but. Uh, but this uh, the solution exists only for some sh short time. There's no long time uh, uh, because the construction is not canonical for big times uh, associated with pass. Very near to zero. Very near to zero. Yeah, Th then because it depends on choice of bases. Choose different bases. Things start, start to grow. Uh, uh, Stray. Uh, uh, maybe just move here. And now, what the nice is on space of metrizations uh, uh, of E, uh, there exists a uh, distance. It's a metric space. Namely, if we have two metrizations, nu1 and nu2, and distance will be supreme of all vectors, whatever you consider this. Maybe sum of u i and u is non zero. And you consider a log of uh, maximum of uh, uh, ratio of uh, u nu one, u nu two. Yeah, I can make distance. And this is a complete metric space.
And now, when we consider this path, it moves with a speed less than pi, because my argument is between 0 and pi. This path is Lipschitz continuous. So distance between nu of t1 and nu of t2 less equals than pi, which is times the value of d1 minus t2. You're implicitly assuming some Brittian uh, condition in there. No, 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 no. I, I have a representation of Q. I have uh, this, uh, numbers, and my numbers gives me automatically arguments between zero and pi for for quiver. Yeah. Now, so it's even less than pi because uh, this numbers. So it's kind of continuous path. And now, if I have a uh, um, solution, uh, tr try to make solution my equation, then there exists some kind of maximal open interval to which it exists, and then take limit point. Then I, when I take limit point, I can again repeat the procedure. And then by kind of induction or whatever, transfinite induction, uh, one sees that there is solution up to positive time. Because the space of uh, the solution should be closed and open subset, like in elementary analysis. Uh, you can uh, always set point that you get. There is solution for all positive time. Right, for all t greater than 0. So you get complete uh, pass. And solution is uh, unique, because for each point, you know canonically the germ in a positive direction. So if we <coughs> coincide, it will be, again, closed and open subset. Yeah, so it gets some elementary analog of ODE theory, and you get unique solution. Uh, and now, What goes on? The theorem is that the speed of trajectory uh, stabilizes for large t. Uh, what does it mean, the speed of trajectory? Uh, uh, at each point, for each moment t, uh, the speed of trajectory will be uh, some harness field filtration. So you get a bunch of uh, numbers theta, and also get some multiplicity, some vector spaces sitting in uh, this dimension. And uh, I forget about exact vector space, remember only dimensions. And the claim, the whole thing became kind of, uh, eventually uh, will not change for a large uh, number of t. Mm. How to, uh, uh, to see it? When I get this uh, uh, reduction, g mu t of e is a representation of, of q over residue field, and it has some harder assumed filtration. Harmonious infiltration, I re recall you that you split, uh, make subobject with increasing thing. And in particular, it means that your vector, the central charge of this vector E, you write as a sum of uh, vectors in uh, 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 gets uh, uh, subobjects in the next quotient and so on. So you write as a, get some kind of convex polygon. or half polygon, and mm, then one can consider something called mass. It will be sum over all j, theta j, absolute value of z of your theta j, of this harmonic infiltration. So it will be length of this polygon. And mm, uh, what one can uh, show is that if you move a little bit, this polygon polygon doesn't change. But if you move uh, immediately, that it will be ah. If you go to the limiting point, then the things will only decrease. So this mass claim 
mass decreases. And because there are, uh, we have kind of fo only finitely many dimensional vectors, we get only finitely many choices. So it should s for some point, it stay constant. Yeah, I didn't talk about it, but for, for quiver, it's kind of obvious. Oh yeah, you have only dimension vectors. Yeah, so you get stabilizes, and then uh, uh, then it stays the same. And and the, cl the claim, if you get pass when speed stabilizes, is the same as the filtration of the residue field. Yeah, that's... Uh, uh, Again, little thinking gives you such picture. Uh, and uh, the conclusion that, uh, and this will be hard on assumed filtration. So, and uh, when speed stabilizers, and uh, yeah, I already removed this prediction uh, story over complex numbers. Uh, and here one can get the following things. This set of vectors uh, uh, which belongs to uh, sigma j's are uh, terms of Harnow signal filtration of a big field. This set of vectors is exactly a set of vectors such that uh, norm uh, nu of t is equal to minus sigma g t plus constant for t sufficiently large. So there's no log log terms here, log log log, it's kind of really goes like linear and uh, linear and uh, that's essentially the end of the story. So harmonic metrics are in this case, uh, uh, this metric says that reduction is semi-simple object of the residue field. Okay, yeah, so it's kind of very easy example and uh, yeah, so next time will be <laughs> more and more complicated analysis. At the end of the day, we'll go to really impossibly hard, hardcore analysis coming from this non-archimedian, even non-archimedian geometry. Okay, thank you. <laughs>